The top 10 innovations in the treatment of neurological disease in my lifetime. Number one, endovascular therapy. This refers to treatments of neurological disease done within the blood vessels. For instance, neurosurgeons historically used to clip aneurysms to prevent rupture, but in modern times, most aneurysms can be treated from within the arteries with coiling by neurointerventional radiologists, a much lower morbidity treatment. For acute stroke, clots can be removed from large arteries through thrombectin with devices like this solitaire device as shown here, increasing the chance of a good neurological recovery. There are also endovascular treatments of arteriovenous malformations such as embolization and treatments of blood clots in the veins, dural venous thrombosis. Number two, multiple sclerosis disease modifying therapy. People with MS have long had treatments of acute attacks with steroids or experimental treatments such as cyclophosphamide, but not until the FDA approval of beta seron, beta interferon 1 in 1993 was there a standard approved treatment to prevent attacks, new lesions on MRI, and disability accumulation. It's hard to point to any one product because disease-modifying therapies have improved over time, but cumulatively the effect is huge with a decreased percentage of people with MS developing significant disabilities. For instance, this is data looking at the probability of reaching EDSS3, moderate disability in MS, which has definitely decreased over time. Number three, levetiracetam. This seizure drug, trade name Keppra, really changed the lives for a lot of people with epilepsy. Older drugs had undesirable side effects or required blood tests for monitoring, but Keppra was well tolerated for many people, allowing people to push up the dose higher and achieve seizure freedom, often getting their driver's license back, and did not require routine blood test monitoring. Also, future studies, accidental pregnancy registries, suggest it's likely safe during pregnancy though talk to your own provider. Number four, deep brain stimulation. Neurosurgeons have long been able to remove things from the brain, but DBS represents a different type of treatment, a true gain of neurological function, where an implanted stimulator targets a key area of the brain to improve neurological symptoms. For instance, it was first FDA approved for Parkinson's disease in 1997, but is also used to treat dystonia, Tourette's syndrome, essential tremor, and various other diseases. For a severe essential tremor, the results can be apparent instantaneously in the operating room and can be very dramatic and life-changing. Number five, thrombolytics for acute stroke. There have long been treatments to prevent strokes, such as blood thinners like aspirin or warfarin, but prior to the publication of the NINS trial in 1995 for intravenous tissue plasminogen activator, treatment of acute stroke was very limited. These drugs, thrombolytics, break up clots, restoring blood flow to affected tissue. This publication, the NINS trial, although not as impressive as thrombolytics, mentioned earlier did show a modestly improved neurological outcome compared to placebo. And in modern times, most centers use tenecteplase or TNK, which is thought to be slightly superior to TPA. Number six, the Epley maneuver. How many neurological diseases can you cure yourself at home like that? Not many. The Epley maneuver or posterior canal otolith repositioning maneuver is an anatomically based maneuver to reposition displaced calcium stones in the middle ear, the cause of benign positional paroxysmal vertigo. First described in 1980, it wasn't quite in my lifetime, but how could I leave it off the list? In modern times, I actually recommend people self-treating at home try the Foster Maneuver because it's usually easier to do, but self-diagnosed at your own risk because other things can cause vertigo too. Number seven, Nusinersen. This incredible drug is a treatment for spinal muscular atrophy and is truly revolutionary. SMA is a neuromuscular degenerative disease that, for instance, content creator Shane Burkaw has that many thought would be untreatable. It's caused by deficiency of the SMN1 gene on chromosome 5, and Spinraza, or Nusinersen, causes alternative splicing of the backup gene, SMN2, creating some usable protein. Randomized trials in children demonstrated dramatically increased survival and better developmental outcomes that could be life-changing. Number eight, triptans. 15 to 20% of the
of the population has migraine headaches, and for some, they're not too bad responding to over-the-counter drugs such as ibuprofen, but for others, they're severe, frequent, and debilitating. Historically, people used to resort to ergotamines, which could be effective, but had unpleasant side effects and rare serious side effects. But in 1991, sumatriptan was FDA-approved, and since then, we have a whole armamentarium of triptans, which are safe and effective for many people with migraine headaches. Number nine, enzyme replacement therapy. Various genetic diseases are caused by a deficiency of an enzyme within the cell, often causing a progressive neurological disease, and historically these were completely untreatable. However, in 1991, Ceridase was approved the first enzyme replacement therapy for Gaucher's disease, and now we have many enzyme replacement therapies for various diseases. Ceridase was actually later taken off the market due to superior treatments for Gaucher's disease. Number 10, intravenous immunoglobin, or IVIG. These are artificial recombinant immunoglobins used to treat various immune-mediated neurological diseases such as Guillain-Barre syndrome and myasthenia gravis. They can also be used to treat deficient immunoglobin states such as genetic conditions like Bruton's agamma globulinemia or people who have a side effect of immunosuppressive drugs and they're used to treat a wide variety of neurological conditions. Intramuscular immunoglobin was developed as early as the 1950s, but it wasn't well absorbed and was not effective. Intravenous immunoglobin was developed in the 1980s. Now, I didn't rank these in any particular order, but you might ask me, what is really the greatest single innervation? Well, it depends what you mean by that. If you mean the most incredible, outstanding, unbelievable innovation, I would say nusinersen. It's just incredible to me that we could do something so precise within the cell and actually have it work to treat human disease and have a major clinically significant effect, even though it's for a relatively rare disease. If you mean the treatment which has the greatest impact on humanity, does the most good, it's probably triptan just because migraines are so common and they can be quite debilitating. But I'd be interested to know your opinion. What do you think is the greatest innovation in neurology since 1980? And did I leave anything completely off the list? And do you have suggestions for future videos.